بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على نبينا الأمين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وعلى من تمسك بسنته بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إن شدت سهلا اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من شر ما في هذه الليلة ونسألك أن خير ما فيه يقول الإمام الذهبي رحمه الله تعالى في كتابه كتاب الكبائر الكبيرة الرابعة ترك الصلاة قال الله تعالى فخلف من بعدهم خلف أضاعوا الصلاة واتبعوا الشهوات فسوف يلقون غيا إلا من تاب وقال الله تعالى فويل للمصلين الذين هم من صلاتهم ساهون الذين هم يراؤون ويمنعون الماعون وقال الله تعالى عن المجرمين يوم القيامة ما سلككم في سقر قالوا لم نكن من المصلين الإمام الذهبي رحمه الله تعالى إخوان in the kabira number four he deals with a kabira that the ummah of al-islam has been tried with during these times as I sit here and I look into the audience I would bet all of the money that I have that the Muslims who are connected to us our relatives, our family members the vast majority of them do not pray the vast majority of our relatives do not pray the Salat of Al-Islam and then there are a large portion of them who pray some of the prayers and they leave some of the prayers right here in this masjid and you brothers are from the Ahlul Masjid there are people from those who are present today who pray some prayers and miss other prayers some people who don't pray Salat al-Fajr unless it's on the weekend or unless they made khuruj for 40 days and they were with some people who make khuruj and they woke up in the masjid then they'll pray the, the Fajr prayer so the Kabira number four is leaving off the Salat there's a scholar in Al-Islam by the name of or his kunya is Abu Zura not Abu Zura al-Razi the Imam of Al-Hadith but Abu Zura al-Iraqi he has a book called Tarh al-Tathrib and in that book he was talking about something that was said concerning the scholar who was doing a class on fiqh and he did what the scholars used to do in the past when they would say let's imagine such and such happen let's imagine this and that happen what would be the, the ruling of that so this particular scholar he said to his students and to the people present let's imagine that someone left the salah intentionally the people became so upset because they didn't appreciate him giving such an example as if he was hoping or wondering maybe one day the Muslims would become a group of people who you can even think that there's someone from amongst them who's going to leave the salah so the community became upset with him simply because he said let's imagine someone left the prayer and then what would the ruling be because it was inconceivable that a person would leave the salat from the people before now the norm is that the Muslims don't pray as it relates to the issue of leaving off the salat this is an issue that has ikhtilaf in the between the scholars whether or not the one who leaves it off is a kafir or not and it's an issue that both sides have their proofs and we should learn the etiquettes of ikhtilaf and it's not permissible for someone who says the one who leaves the salat is a kafir he believes in the salat but he leaves it off as a result of being lazy some ulama said he's a kafir like Al Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala if one of you brothers took that position it's not permissible for anyone to say you're from the khawarij you are takfiri because you make kufr of the one who left the salat that's a justified bona fide position of the ulama in al-islam and they're a delil for it from the quran and the sunnah and similarly if a person took the other position the position of the majority of ulama the jamhur 
that the one who leaves the salat out of negligence and out of being lazy, he's not a kafir. And the Imam Shafi was of this opinion and other than him. The people who take the position that he's a kafir for leaving the salat, you can't say to that individual, you are the mur you're from the murji'a. You allow the leaving of the, of the deeds and you believe the person is still a Muslim? No, it's an issue of ikhtilaat that the scholars had. So therefore, we have to be fair and just. I would advise all of you to do something about reading up on this issue so that you can take a position. We have to learn about the ahkam of the salat. Today when I came for salat al-asr, I came in late, may wudu, there were people who were praying back there, over there. One brother I know in particular was praying by himself, even though the Jama'ah has started, he was praying by himself because he was a traveler. So he wanted to pray Salat al-Dhuhr and then get with the Jama'ah to pray Salat al-Asr. I don't know what the other people were doing. We need to learn about all of the ahkam of the Salat. That the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِذَا أُقِيمَتُ الصَّلَاةِ فَلَا صَلَاةَ إِلَّا الْمَكْتُوبَةِ if the iqama has been made, the iqama has been made, and the salat is established, the Muslims are praying behind the imam. It's haram, haram, la yajuz, your athem. Not permissible to go anywhere in that masjid to pray. It's not permissible. If you have already prayed those prayers, get with the people and pray with them. Or get lost so no one can see you. It's not permissible to sit on the side, nor is it permissible for you to pray the two rakas of Fajr while the Imam is making those salat. The point is, Ikhwani, we have to learn about the ahkam of salat from A to Z. Our children have to know about the ahkam of the salat. So as it relates to this issue, there's ikhtilaf between the ulama. The scholars of Islam took care of this issue and they wrote books. Those of you who have the book, Aqidatu Ashab al-Hadith, Aqidatu Salaf, as wa Ashab al-Hadith, the Aqidah of the Salaf, the people of the Hadith by Imam al-Sabuni, I believe that's been translated. When he came to this issue, he said, and leaving off the Salat is ikhtilaf between the ulama. Al Imam al Shafi and the Jumhur of the Ulama of the opinion that he's not a Kafir. But Al Imam Ahmed had the position that he was a Kafir. The scholars roll about this issue. So it's not permissible for someone to come now and to be rough and tough against the other position because bona fide scholars took the position on this issue. Concerning Al Imam al Dhahabi, he was Hanbali. And the Hanbali Madhab is that in general they take the position that you are a Kafir. A Sheikh ibn Baz, a Sheikh ibn Uthaymeen, they were from the Hanbali Madhab, Mujtahids. And they used to say that the one who leaves the Salat is a Kafir. What I mean by leaving the Salat, they said if a person was lazy, like our relatives, our mother, our father, brothers, sisters, our wives, our brother's wife, so forth and so on. If that person didn't leave or make the Salat, but he believes in Salat, a Sheikh ibn Baz says he's a Kafir. If he dies like that, you can't inherit from him. If he dies like that, you have to bury him with the kuffar. You can't marry him. If his wife wants a divorce, they're divorced automatically. That's the Hanbali position. Sheikh Islam Muhammad, Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah was of the opinion that they're kuffar. A Dhahabi, a student of Ibn Taymiyyah, it's not clear what his position is from this particular chapter. It's not clear. And if you had to take a position, it, it seems that a dhahabi doesn't make takfir of the one who leaves the salat out of negligence. It seems like that. He was around scholars who wrote about the issue like Al-Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim who has a book, Ikhwan, that is called dealing with this issue alone. As salat wa hukum tarikiha. The Salat and the rules concerning the one who left it. And he brought all of the Adilla from the Quran and from the Sunnah and the statements of the Imam of this Ummah to prove that he's a Kafir. Al Imam Al Albani had a book, As Salat wa Hukum Tarikiha. And the scholars wrote about it in the books of Fiqh. One of the best books that I found concerning this issue is the book by Mustafa ibn Ismail al-Sulaymani which is called Sabil al-Najat fi bayan hukm tarak al-Salat 
Mustafa ibn Ismail al-Sulaymani is Abu al-Hasan al-Ma'radi. He gathered together the aqwal of the a'imma and the statements of the people and then he gave us a position what he thought was the truth. He has a very beneficial book. And Imam al dahabi brings three ayat from the Quran to prove if you leave off the prayer out of negligence, then you are a kafir. Concerning this hukum ikhwani, the one who says praying is not beneficial, I don't have to pray. They had to pray back then, but I don't have to pray now. If you pray, it looks funny and I feel like a chicken. The one who says that is a kafir with the ijma of the ulama. No ikhtilaf in that. The Muslim who makes a jahat, he says, I don't have to pray. Praying isn't wajib and so forth and so on. If someone says that, all of the ulama says he's a kafir. The one who didn't pray because he forgot or he didn't know. All of the ulama said, he's not a kafir. Ijma. The ikhtilaf is in the issue. The one who leaves the salah, he believes in it. He knows it's wajib. He knows it's beneficial. But he's lazy. Like our relatives. He's lazy. What is the hukum? It's ikhtilaf. And Imam al dhahabi brings three ayat from the Quran that prove whether he's a kafir or not a kafir. Leaving off the salat is a kabira from the kabair. The first statement is a statement of Allah Azza wa Jal when he said, and then there came after them a group of people who lost the salat and they followed the shahawat. فَصَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيَّا إِلَّا مَنْ آمَنَا إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَا وَعَمِلَ الصَّالِحَا فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ وَلَا يُظْلَمُونَ الشَّيْئَا Allah described in this ayat in the Quran in Surah Al-Maryam ayat number 59 some believers who came before and then after describing the righteous salihin from those people Allah said and then there came after them a group of people who lost the salah and they followed their shahawat these people are going to go into the hellfire they're going to get a punishment Except the one who makes toba for what he did, left off the salat and followed the shahawat. And they also, after making toba, they believed. And after that, they did the righteous deeds. Those people will enter into the jannah and they will not be oppressed one bit. So the scholars use this as a delil and it's clear that Allah Azza wa Jalla said that they left off the salat and that they're going to enter into the hellfire. And he said, unless they have Iman again. They believe again because they became Kuffar. So that's one of the strong Delils. But it's not a Delil that is very strong. That Delil by itself doesn't prove or show that someone is a non-Muslim because he left off the Salat. Why? It doesn't prove that he's a non-Muslim, number one, because in this ayat, he died to Salat, they lost the Salat, has been explained by the companions. What is the meaning of losing the Salat? Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said the meaning of idaatu salah here means that they didn't take care of the time of the salah. They prayed the salat of the munafiq, waited until the time almost went out and then they pray very quickly. He wants to watch Chelsea play in the semifinals, so while the game is going he doesn't want to get up. He says I'm going to make the salat at half time. And then when half time comes, he goes and he prays real quick. That's what the ayat is talking about. With the text that comes from the companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So their understanding of the ayat is a delil. Secondly, Akhwan, in the ayat, Allah mentioned two crimes. That they lost the salat and they also followed their shahawat. So there are some people who follow their shahawat. Everybody who follows their shahawat does not become a kafir. Everyone who follows his desires, most people are going to follow their desires. So this delil by itself does not stand up because there's, for the most part, most people, they are negligent with the times of the salat. Nonetheless, delaying the salat, losing the salat is a kabira from the kabair. The second delil he brought ikhwan was the statement of Allah Ta'ala, فَوَيْلُ musallin. Woe unto the prayers. Those people who concerning their salat, they are negligent. Again, this is not a delil. And the reason why it's not a delil is because the companions of Rasulullah 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the meaning of this ayah those people were negligent about their salat this ayah is talking about the people who neglect the time they're negligent about the salat meaning they don't have the khushu' in the salat they have a lahu in the salat they're playing when it's time for the salat one of them is looking around and you come into the masjid in this masjid and he's praying over here and he looks at you when you come into the door that's the meaning of this ayat according to the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So it is not a dalil by itself. The third and last dalil from the Quran that Al Imam Al Dhahabi brought was the statement of Allah Tabarak wa Taala when it will be said Yom Al Qiyamah to the Mujrimin, to the criminals. Ma salakakum bissaqar. What caused you people to be in the hellfire? They will respond, Qalu lam nakum min al We are in the hellfire because we didn't used to pray. And then Imam al Dhahabi stopped there. That's the extent of this ayah. What caused you people to wind up in the saqr, in the hellfire? They say we weren't from those who pray. But if you continue the ayat, you'll see that this is not enough to make a person a kafir. Because they went on to mention something else that they used to didn't do. وَلَمْ نَكُمْ نُطْعِمْ الْمِسْكِينَ And we also didn't feed the poor. So the Muslim who doesn't feed the poor, does he become a kafir and he goes into the hellfire? Of course not. The ayat is talking about those people who were kuffar and they didn't see salat as being something from the deen. They didn't see the haq of the masakin and the fuqara talking about the kuffar. So these adilla by themselves, they don't show that the person is a kafir. Probably the strongest delil from the Quran for the people who see that leaving the salat is kufr is the statement of Allah in Surah at tawbah And it's two ayahs that are similar. Anyway, the one in question is the statement of Allah Ta'ala illa man taba illa in taba wa aqamu salat wa atu zaka fa ikhwanukum fi din Allah was talking to Rasulullah sallallahu about how to deal with those kuffar and Allah said but if they make tawbah and they establish the salat and they give the zakat then they are your brothers in the deen so it's understood from that if they don't make tawbah and come to the deen and they don't establish the salat and give zakat then they're not your brothers in the deen so those are the three adilla but there are more adilla that the ulama use to show that leaving the quran leaving the salat is kufr and those three are from the quran as for the sunnah the sunnah has some clearer proofs and imam al dhahabi said rahimahullah ta'ala wa qala an nabiyyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al ahd alladhi baynana wa baynahum as salat faman tarakaha faqad kafara wa qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man fatatu salatu al asr habita amaluhu al imam al dhahabi said from the dalil to show that they are kufar is that the hadith of rasulullah that is authentic sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the difference between us al ahd the contract the difference is the best translation here. The difference between us and them is the salah. So anyone who leaves it has disbelieved. And then the second hadith, whoever misses salat al-asr, then his deeds will be rendered null and void. Another hadith said whoever misses salat al-asr, it is as if he has lost all of his money and all of his family. That's the seriousness of a salat, ikhwan. The salat in al-Islam. The salat in al-Islam is that issue that no matter what, that salat is never going to be taken off of you. You only have to fast if you have the ability to fast. You don't have to fast if you're traveling or if you're sick. You only have to give zakat if you have the money to give zakat. If you don't have the money, you don't have to give zakat. You only have to make hajj if you have the money or the road is safe and you have the ability and the sister has the muhram, the, the muhram. If you don't have that, you don't have to make any of the arkan of al-Islam, the last three. But concerning the salat, no matter what, if you can only pray sitting down, you pray sitting down. If you can pray just moving your eyes, salat never comes off of you. Even in jihad, half of the community pray one rakah while the other half guard the Muslims. After they finish the one rakah, the other people come, 
to pray the second rakah and those people protect the Muslims. The salat that the Prophet used to say to Bilal radiallahu anhu, Arihna bis salat ya Bilal. Rasulullah used to say to Bilal, A hey Bilal, make us comfortable with the prayer. Meaning, when Bilal made the adhan for salat and it was time to pray, this used to cause Rasulullah tranquility. He used to get a raha. Unlike the people today, salat is a burden. I have to get up and pray fajr. Okay, I'm going to get up, but I'm going to pray very quickly and jump back in the bed. Arihna bis salat ya Bilal. Bilal, make us comfortable with the prayer. I'm going to be in communion and communication with Allah reading his kalam. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said to his companions, وَجُعِلَتْ لِيَ salat قُرُّتُ عَيْنِ The salah has been made a cool of my eyes. That's how Rasulullah used to look at the prayer in Al-Islam. He would be on a journey, and on the journey, Ikhwani, before going to get the people, he would say, hold on, hold on. Let's see if we hear the Adhan. And he will wait. If he heard the Adhan, they'll keep going. If he didn't hear the Adhan for Salah, they'll go down and pounce upon the people and pulverize them. The Salah was an example of the Iman and the Islam of the people. As we mentioned today, it's the opposite, Ikhwani. A man wants to marry his daughter to a man, he doesn't ask, does he make Salah? Wallahi, leaving off Salah is a bigger crime than drinking Khamar. Leaving off salat is a bigger crime than making zina. If a man made zina and our family heard about it, became public, we won't let our daughters marry him, and rightly so. But wallah, he's leaving salat is greater than zina or drinking khamr. It's a bigger kabira. It is the most important rukun from the arkan of Islam after the shahadatin. So if a person left Salat al-Asr, his deeds will be rendered null and void. What about all of the prayers? All of the prayers every day. The prayer that the Prophet said about it, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, أَوَّلُ مَا يُحَاسَبُ بِهِ الْعَبْدُ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَ مِنْ عَمْلِهِ الصَّلَاةِ فَانْسَلُحَتْ أَنْجَحَ وَأَفْلَحَ وَإِنْ فَسَدَتْ خَابَ وَخَسِرَ The very first thing Allah is going to ask you about Yawm Al-Qiyamah concerning your deeds after the grave, concerning living in this life, is His prayer. If His prayer was right and exact, then the rest of the deeds will be right and exact. If the prayers were not right and exact, they were wanton and lacking, the rest of His deeds are going to be wanton and lacking. So the Salat in Al-Islam ikhwan, is an important issue. Al-Imam al-Dhahibi rahimahullahu ta'ala went on to say وَعَنْهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَىٰ عَلِي وَسَلَّمْ بَيْنَ الْعَبْدِ وَبَيْنَ الشِّرْكِ تَرْكُ الصَّلَاةِ The thing that is between a slave and shirk is if he leaves off the salah. And the Prophet didn't mention in this hadith صلى الله عليه وسلم he left it intentionally he left it as a result of being negligent. If a person leaves off the salat with intent, or whether it's negligence, he left it, this hadith says, then between him and leaving off the salat, and shirk is, him, between him and shirk is leaving off the salat. He went on to say, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and he began this hadith in the middle, Man taraka salat muta'amida, faqad bara'at minhu dhimmatullah. Authentic hadith. Whoever intentionally leaves off the prayer, the protection of Allah will be taken away from him. The dhimma of Allah, Allah's protection, Allah's guidance, Allah's pleasure will be taken from him. This hadith has a beginning that we want to mention here because it is important. In the beginning of the hadith, Abu Darda radiallahu anhu said, Awsani Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi tis'an. Qal, لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ شَيْئًا وَإِنْ قُتِعْتَ أَوْ حُرِّكْتَ وَلَا تَتْرُقَ إِنَّ الصَّلَاءَ مُتَعَمِّدًا فَمَنْ تَرَكَ الصَّلَاءَ مُتَعَمِّدًا فَقَدْ بَرَأَ مِنْهُ ذِمَّةُ اللَّهِ Abu Darda said, I heard nine things that Rasulullah gave me a wasiyah صلى الله عليه وسلم Before he died, he told me to take care of nine things he said, the first thing is, don't make shirk with Allah. 
even if they cut you into pieces or they were to burn you. Don't make shirk with Allah. Which shows us the other side of the story, Ikhwani. If a Muslim is compelled in his religion to do haram, if he's compelled to do haram, Al-Islam has opened up the way for him. Unfortunately, Ikhwan, whether it's the Salat or the Aqidah, the Muslims have lost the plot. I've heard up until today, four different occasions, different occasions, where Muslims are saying that the Pope, we don't know if he died as a Muslim or non-Muslim. The Pope may be in Jannah because he may have embraced Islam before he died. And other people even said he was a good man. When did the Muslims start having doubt about issues like that? A person who's the representative of shirk and the tathleef. لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ الثَّارِثُ الثَّلَاثَ They disbelieve those who say Allah is one of three. A person is the representative of that aqidah and the Muslims say, you can't say that he's a non-Muslim. إِنَّ الدِّينَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الْإِسْلَامِ The religion with Allah is al-Islam. وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينَ فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ That's the Qur'an. In Sahih Muslim, the Prophet told us صلى الله عليه وسلم لَا يَسْمَعُ بِيَا رَجُلُ مِنْ هَذِي الْأُمَّةِ يَهُودِيٌّ وَلَا نَصْرَانِيٌّ ثُمَّ لَمْ يُؤْمِنْ بِهِ إِلَّا دَخَرَ النَّارِ There is no man from this Ummah who hears about me whether he is a Yahud or a Nasrani and then he doesn't believe in me except that he will enter into the hellfire but if we're going to say Al-Islam is the religion of truth we're going to have to be able to prove how Al-Islam has answered all of the issues for the human being so one of the issues that the human being is confronted with is sometimes he's going to be compelled to do what is haram. What does Al-Islam do? Al-Islam allows the door to be open, to give you a chance. حُرِّمَتْ عَلَيْكُمْ الْمَيْتَةُ وَالْدَّمُ وَلَحْمُ الْخِنْزِيرِ وَمَا أُحِلَّ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ بِهِ All of those things that are haram to eat. Blood, dead meat, the thing that was slaughtered for other than Allah Azawajal, the animal that was strangled, the animal that was gored, the animal that was eaten by other animals, the animal that was slaughtered for the altars, all of that, haram. And then at the end of the ayat, Allah Azza wa Jalla said, فَمِنَ التُّرَّ فِي مَخْمَسَةِ غَيْرُ مُتَجَانِفٍ لِإِثَمْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُرُ الرَّحِيمٍ But whoever was compelled to eat that, whoever was forced to eat it, Allah is forgiven. If he's compelled, Allah will forgive you. Allah Azza wa Jalla will forgive you in your religion when you're compelled and you're forced to do this or you're forced to do that. So as it relates to Al-Islam, Al-Islam is the religion of truth, Ikhwani, and we have to, we have to make it our business to learn about the Aqidah of Al-Islam, to be able to say that the man who died on other than Al-Islam, we judge him based upon the Zahir. And then after knowing about the correct Aqidah, the most important rukun from the Arkan of the, sal of the Islam is the Salah. In this hadith here, Rasulullah says, وسلم, do not make shirk except even if they burnt you or they cut you up. So the point that we wanted to make was in the case with Ammar ibn Yasir, he saw his father and he saw his mother killed before his very eyes. And everyone knows what the kuffar did to his mother, how they stabbed her with the spear. They asked Ammar, now what do you have to say about Islam and Muhammad? Ammar started cursing Islam and started cursing Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But his Iman caused him to go to Rasulullah. He told Rasulullah what happened. Rasulullah said, how's your heart? Kayfa tajit qalbat? How's your heart? He said, u'min billahi wa rasooli. I believe in Allah and His Messenger. Rasulullah said, in adu fa'ud. If they take you again, say the same thing again. If they persecute you again, say the same thing again. Curse me, curse the deen. And then Allah Azawajal revealed the ayats of the Quran. مَنْ كَفَرَ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ إِيمَانِهِ إِلَّا مَنْ أُكْرِهَا وَقَلْبُهُ مُطْمَئِنُّ بِالْإِيمَانِ وَلَكِنْ مَنْ شَرَحَ بِالْكُفْرِ صَدْرًا 
فَعَلَيْهُمْ غَضَبٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ Anybody who changes after Iman and disbelieves in Allah except the one who believes but he was compelled. So this hadith, ikhwan, it shows the two extremes. On one hand, you can be like Ammar and you could take the easy way out. On the other hand, you could be like Bilal and say, Ahad, Ahad. On the other hand, you can be like the father of Ammar, Yas and his mother, and don't change your religion. So you have to decide when you're being compelled. When do you take that side and when do you take this side? If it's just you by yourself, then take the strong way. No, I'm not going to do it. I don't want the job. But if other people are behind you, family members, children, people you're responsible for, Al-Islam allows you to take the weak way out. But when you take the weak way out, you still have to make an attempt to get out of your situation. So, whoever leaves off the Salat intentionally, he will be outside of the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Imam al-Dhahabi, he said, Rahimahullah ta'ala, that Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal, Amma annahu la hadh li ahadin fil Islam, adda'a salat. Umar said, the one who leaves off the prayer, he doesn't have any portion of Al-Islam. The one who was not praying, his hadh from Al-Islam has been left. Umar also said, and I want to remind you brothers of the statement of Umar radiallahu anhu. مَن لَمْ يُحُجْ وَهُوَ قَادِرٌ عَلَيْهِ فَلْيَمُوتْ يَهُودِيًّا أَوْ نَصْرَانِيًّا Whoever dies and he never made hajj and he had the ability to do it, then let him die as a Jew or Christian. I'll make hajj when I'm 40. I'll make hajj when I get married. I'll make hajj when I get out of debt. No, the Muslim has to hurry up and make hajj. So Umar radiallahu anhu was of the opinion that if a person left the prayer, he was a kafir. In addition to that, Ikhwan, comes one of the most important issues of this chapter that we want you to concentrate on. One of the most important issues as it relates to judging the one who leaves the salah. And that is Al-Imam Al-Dhahabi's statement, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, كان أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يرون شيء من الأعمال تركه كفرا غير الصلاة. The companions of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم did not see the leaving off of any action or deed as being kufr other than the salah. And this is one of the issues that I have. I've been back and forth on the issue of the tarik al salah. One month I say they're kuffar. The next month I say no, they're Muslims. And next month you say no, they're kuffar. Next month you say no, they're Muslims. What's one of the reasons why you're saying that they are kuffar? Because our Dao is the Dao and the Aqeedah of the Salaf of this Ummah. And the companions are at the top of the list, radiallahu anhu. And you're not going to find any companion and except that he said, Whoever left Salat is a Kafir. You're not going to find a companion with the other position. There's ijma from the companions that the Tariq of the Salat is a Kafir. But the other position that says, no, they're not Kufar, they're Muslims, is that if everyone who left the Salat was a Kafir, Wallahi, the majority of our Ummah are Kufar. And is that conceivable that the majority of the Muslims are kuffar? You brothers as you sit there, those people are connected to you. Most of them don't pray. Are we going to believe that the majority of the Ummah Muhammad وسلم, are all kuffar? That's a big pill and a bitter pill to swallow. But that's not enough. If we refuse to make takfir of the people simply based upon that, that's put on our aql before the naql, the companions have ijma that they're kuffar. So we have to add on to that intellect. What do we add on to it? Those many scholars who took the other position. And they took those other positions based upon dalil from the Quran and the Sunnah. Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned in the Quran, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَنْ يَغْفِرُ وَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِي وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ Allah will not forgive that you make shik with him, but he'll forgive everything other than that. 
which caused some of the scholars to say leaving off the salah is less than shirk قُلْ يَا إِبَادِ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَى أَنفُسِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الظُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Say to my servants, O oh my servants, who have gone overboard and you made a lot of sins, don't give up from the rahm of Allah. Allah forgives all sins except shirk. So the companions of Rasulullah they didn't see the one who left the, the zakat as a kafir. Some of them did, some of them didn't. When Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, I'm going to fight them, Umar and the companions stood up and said, how are you going to fight a group of people who say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad al-Rasulullah. Abu Bakr said, Rasulullah says, Umirtu an nuqatil al-nas hatta yashhadu wa la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad al-abduhu wa rasuluh wa yuqimu salat wa yutu zakat. And that's why zakat is the next kabira. Zakat always comes after the salat in the Quran. So the companions were not in agreement that one who left the zakat is a kafir, but they were in agreement that the one who left the salat was a non-Muslim. He went on to say, Akhwani, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, وقال الإمام ابن حزم رحمه الله تعالى لا ذنب بعد الشرك أعظم من ترك الصلاة حتى يخرج وقتها وقتل مؤمن بغير حق. الإمام ابن حزم, the Imam of the Zahiri Madhab said, there is no crime or sin that is greater after shirk. The next greatest crime is leaving the prayer until the prayer, the time of the prayer went out and killing someone unjustly. So what did Imam al-Dhahibi do? He brought first shirk is the first kabira, and then killing someone, and then magic, and then number three, leaving off the salat is the fourth kabira. So the scholars of al-Islam ikhwan, and the regular Muslims of al-Islam, they always looked at the salat as being an issue that determines and proves a person Islam and his iman. Especially during these times, where the Muslims on a daily basis are in a campaign and they're in a perpetual war to practice their Islam. So the people who really want to be real Muslims, one of the things they try to hold on to in these terrible times is the prayer. Especially when you come to the masjid to make that salah. For it to be an issue that people look at, you can leave it if you want, you can take it if you want. There's something grossly wrong with the mentality of the Muslim Ummah today and the fact that we look at the Salat as being an issue where you can marry someone or marry your daughter to someone or your son to someone and they don't pray. It's not permissible to marry your daughter to someone who doesn't pray because that's open fisk. Open fisk. The tayyibun are for the tayyibat and the tayyibat are for the tayyibin. The one who doesn't pray is from the people who are the people of al-khubf, dirt and filth. And Imam al-Dhahabi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he went on to say, on the authority of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu anhu, anna rajulin qala, ya Rasulullah, ittaqillah. Faqala nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, waylak, alastu ahaqqu ahla al-ard an attaqi Allah, فقال خالد بن وليد رضي الله عنه يا رسول الله دعني أضرب أنقة قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم لا لعله أن يكون يصلي The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he distributed the spoils of war ذو خويسرا the Imam of the Khawarij the big fitna of the Ummah that رسول الله knew was going to happen صلى الله عليه وسلم he wasn't pleased with the distribution. So he said, Ya Rasulullah, fear Allah. Fear Allah, be just. Fear Allah. Rasulullah said, woe unto you. If I don't fear Allah, who from amongst you can fear Allah? Khalid ibn Walid said, Ya Rasulullah, let me chop his head off. Let me kill him. Munafiq, kafir, saying something like that. Rasulullah said, no, don't kill him. It may be that he prays. It may be that he prays. The fact that the man prayed was a protection for his blood in this issue, even though he deserved to be prayed, he deserved to be killed. And the reason why he wasn't killed is because of the fitna. Killing him would have created a bigger fitna. 
then he deserved to be killed. But that's from the fiqh of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and from the fiqh of Imam al-Dhahabi is that he put this hadith here to show that the salat of the man was the reason why Rasulullah gave sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in front of the people and it shows the importance of the salat. He didn't say maybe, maybe he's good to his mother and his father. It may be he gives a lot of sadaqah to the fuqara and the masakeen and the masajid. It may be that he makes salah, he makes jihad and defends Islam. He said, no, don't kill him. It may be that the man is a person who takes care of the salah. I've been ordered to kill the people until they say, La ilaha illa Allah, Muhammad Rasulullah, and they make salat and give the zakat. If they do that, their blood and their money has become protected. I don't take their blood and their money, except by the haqq of Islam. I take the diya, if one of them kills someone else, then they are killed, and so forth and so on. So the Salat, Ikhwani, it is something that will protect the blood of a Muslim. We're almost done here. He went on to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Ala Ali Wa Sallam, Man lam yuhafid this hadith, that the Prophet Sallallahu said according to this hadith, Man lam yuhafid ala salat, lam yakun lahu nurun wa la burhanun wa la najatun yawmul qiyamah, wa kana ma'a qarun wa fir'aun wa haman, Whoever does not protect the prayer and take care of the prayer, he will not have any light, Yomul Qiyamah, nor will he be successful, nor will he have a Burhan, and he will be raised up with Qarun, and he will be raised up with Fir'aun, and he will be raised up with Haman, and he will be raised up with Abu Jahl, and Ubay, Ibn Khalif. This hadith is not authentic. This hadith is not authentic, but again, what do we mention at the beginning of our lectures in Kitab al-Kaba'ir? The minhaj of the muhaddithin like al-Imam al-Dhahabi, like al-Imam al-Nawawi, and Riyadh al-Salihin, whenever they bring weak hadith, when do they do it? They always bring it at the end of the chapter. They never make the weak hadith the first hadith, the first delil they're trying to prove. It's always after the ayat. And then the authentic hadith. And then at the end, they bring the weak hadith. And when they bring the weak hadith, they'll say, nabi And it is said that the Prophet said, nabi And it is narrated. So these scholars would use the weak hadith in order to strengthen this particular position, but they did not rely upon the weak hadith. And we're going to come to a chapter in this book, lying on Rasulullah as a kabirah from the kabair. So when you narrate a weak hadith that he didn't say, you're falling into a kabirah from the kabair. So when Imam al-Dhahibi knew that, he's a muhaddith, a hafiz in al-Islam. So this hadith is not authentic, and it's one of the famous hadith to prove the danger of leaving salat. So remember, whoever doesn't protect the hadith, the, the, the salat, he will be raised up with Qarun, Fir'aun, Haman, Abu Jahl, and Ubay ibn Kaab. That is a weak hadith. That's mashhur, well known. It's weak. Now, whoever doesn't hold on and protect the salat. Shukar, ya akhi. Finally, Al Imam al Dhahabi, he said, Rahimahullahu ta'ala, and this is why I said, you don't get the clear indication of what his position is with the one who leaves off the salat. He said, فَمُؤَخِّرَ الصَّلَاءَ إِنْ وَقْتِهَا صَاحِبْ كَبِيرًا وَتَارِكُهَا بِالْكُلِّيَةِ آنِي الصَّلَاةَ الْوَاحِدَةَ كَمَنْ زَنَى وَالسَّرِقَةَ لأن ترك كل صلاة أو تفويتها كبيرة فإن فعل ذلك مرات كان من أهل الكبائر إلا أن يتوب فإن لازم ترك الصلاة فهو من الأخسرين الأشقياء المجرمين From what I understand from this, he's not making takfir of the one who leads off the salah. He said, the one who delays the prayer until the time goes out. He is a person who has committed a kabira. He's a sahib al-kabira. And the one who leaves the salat in totality, ani as salat al wahid the one who leaves one salat, he just doesn't pray that one prayer. He is like the one who makes zina, or the one who is a thief. Because leaving off the salat 
until the time goes out, it is a form of stealing in this kabira. And whoever does it multiple times, time and time again, he is from the people of Al-Kaba'ir, except that he makes Tawbah. Except that he makes Tawbah. But if he continuously does this, then he's from the losers, from the Ashqiyah, the Mujrimeen. He's from the criminals. And those people will be sad in Yawm Al-Qiyamah. That last sentence that he closed the chapter out with, it appears in this book alone that Al-Imam Al-Dahibi was the opinion of the opinion that the Tariq Al-Salah wasn't a kafir. Wallahu alam. We're not going to state that emphatically because of Dahabi has many books that you have to read to bring all of his kalam together to get the final position of the Imam. But in Kitab al Kabair, that is not clear up until this point. Wallahu a'la wa alam. So, Ikhwani, the Salat in Al Islam, to leave it as a kabira from the Kabair. Whoever leaves the Salat, he fell into kufr. But he fell into the kufr of actions. If he left the Salat al-Fajr to come and go out, he fell into kufr because Rasulullah called leaving the Salat kufr, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But there's two types of kufr: kufr that takes you out of the religion and kufr that doesn't take you out of the religion. The kufr al-amani, the kufr of actions, to curse the Muslim is kufr of actions. But it doesn't take you out of the religion. But if a person left the salah saying it's not beneficial, it doesn't bring any benefit, I don't have to pray it, and he knows what he's saying, then this is the kufr akbar that takes him out of the religion and he becomes a kafir and he is killed as a murtad. He's killed as a murtad because he left the religion of Al Islam. As for he leaves the salah out of being lazy. It's a kabira from the kabair, but there is ikhtilaf between the scholars and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. It seems ikhwan, that the people who say he's not a kafir, their dalil are stronger and more in number. Like the two ayahs that we mentioned. Also the Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they're going to come a group of people and all they're going to say is la ilaha illallah. And they're going to say we found our mothers and fathers saying that, and that's all we know. And Rasulullah said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that's going to benefit them, La ilaha illallah. The narrator of the hadith, Abu Dhar, said, Ya Rasulullah, but they didn't pray and they didn't fast. Rasulullah said, it's going to benefit them. Abu Dhar said, but they didn't pray, they didn't fast. He said, it's going to benefit them. Abu Dhar said, but they didn't pray and they didn't fast. Rasulullah said, Ala raghm anfi Abu Dhar, despite the nose of Abu Dhar, it's going to benefit them. In another hadith, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Five prayers Allah may wajib upon the servants. Whoever takes care of them will come Yawm Al-Qiyamah with Nur and Burhan with Allah. And whoever comes and he doesn't take care of them, he will be under the Mashiach of Allah. If he wants, he'll punish them. If he doesn't want, he'll, if he wants, he'll forgive them. Five prayers to be done in the day and the night. Whoever comes and he took care of him, he'll have the protection of Allah. Whoever comes and he's not taking care of them, then Allah Azza wa Jal will put him under the Mashia of Allah. And there are many a hadith like that from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. And Allah knows best as to the reality of the issue. What we should do is be like the first Muslims were. When the Shaykh gave the class and he said, for the sake of argument, let's say that someone doesn't pray. The people got upset and said, don't give that example. What do you mean, Shaykh, if the people don't pray? Are you hoping that? Are you wishing that? Are you going to open the door for someone to think, maybe I don't have to pray because the ruling will be this or that? The community took offense to the example. Now, the Shaykh has to give the example. Let's just say for an example, everybody in the city prays. The person, hey Sheikh, will you give that example for? That's not real. And he becomes upset because that's the reality of our situation. The Prophet, when he was dying, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he lost consciousness. When he woke up, he said, what? As-salat, as-salat, wa ma marakat imanukum. And he fell out. The prayer, the prayer, two times. Take care of the prayer, the prayer, and what your right hands possess falls under your authority. And he fell out. He came through again. What did he say? Did he talk about a dijab? Did he talk about Jannah? Nah? He said, As-salat, as-salat, wa ma malakat imanukum. The prayer, the prayer, and what your right hands possess. 
If that's not enough proof, Ikhwan, to show the severity and the seriousness of leaving the salah, then Allahu Alam, what is? The companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they would be afflicted with a disease or a sickness, but that would not allow them to believe they could stay home for the salah. He would call him and he would call him and they would bring him to the masjid. Why? Because everyone else in the community used to consider the one who didn't come to the masjid is a munafiq. salat ala al-munafiqeen salat al-fajr wa salat al-isha the most difficult salat on the munafiqeen. Salat is difficult on the munafiqeen. Yura'una they just pray to show the people وَلَا يَذْكُرُونَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا وَلَا يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا They don't really pray, they just not really, they're not really praying. يُرَاؤُونَ النَّاسِ They just want the people to see, I'm not a munafiq. But they don't really mean that. So those companions used to make sure that they would come to the masjid in order for one of them not to be labeled as this person has hypocrisy in him. But now again, as we mentioned, someone would marry a girl who doesn't pray or marry his sister to a boy who doesn't pray. That marriage is not permissible. You're not taking care of the amana. You're not taking care of the amana. So we're going to stop here, inshallah. If you...